My name is Moral Sitar. I am the founder of BiblioCrunch, and my talk for this morning is uh, self-publishing tools and APIs. And first, I was just going to start about talking my journey so far in publishing. Uh, as I talked about last night, is I used to work for a big media company for almost five years. And what I noticed is media companies are falling behind because they're failing to adapt their business models to what consumers want. So I will, actually am an engineer by background. I was a software developer for seven years, and I launched a lot of the digital products at time.com. I also worked on ebooks, videos, apps, launched all their blogs. And earlier this year, I noticed, I recognized that there was a need in the ebook space, so I left my full time job to launch bibliocrunch.com. And just a quick note about Bibliocrunch it's a community platform where you can create ebooks on the fly which will convert into the multiple e-reader formats. But not only that, it also brings together the professionals that are actually involved in creating an e-book, like a designer, editor, copy editor, and the authors themselves. So first, we'll start about talking about the digital publishing space. It's expected to grow to 2.7 billion by 2013, which is nearly nine times larger than it was in 2009. E-book sales are going to skyrocket. They've been skyrocketing. They've been skyrocketing for a few years now. So by 2013, uh, the prediction is U.S. consumers will purchase 381 ebooks, 381 million ebooks, roughly four times the amount that they purchased in 2010. Ebooks will bring in substantial revenues. In the next three years alone, ebook sales will grow at se over 72 percent to reach a market of 2.7 billion by 2013. So the overarching question is. How can authors and publishers reach higher repeat engagement with their target audience? And one way to do that is to add additional content creators. There's so many different ways to tell a story, and the people who tell stories right now are not just authors and writers who are the traditional content creators, but actually people who contribute on Google, people who do reviews on Yelp, TripAdvisor, food spotting, which is like a photo sharing site for food. LinkedIn users, Foursquare users who comment, tweeters, bloggers, and journalists. So what um, I've been actually testing and experimenting is to put consumers who are the readers at the center of your business. It's not just a traditional model of the author who's just pushing out their books to be consumed by the reader. So by leveraging self-publishing tools and APIs, we're kind of redefining the content creators as the readers and the authors. And then also by doing that, you're engaging a whole new set of readers. Because customers' readers matter almost as much as what you publish, you're enabling readers to participate in the book development process. And since we already act and behave in online social networks, um, this is one way to get them involved. And by understanding the community dynamics that surround your readers' customers, you'll actually be able to engage a wider audience. And first, I'm just going to start talking about some of the tools. And it seems like everyone here already knows what they are, so I won't spend too much time on the slide. Um, so just a few self-publishing desktop tools that I've been playing around with is Calibre, which is free open source ebook library management and conversion. InDesign, which is kind of expensive. Uh, I actually thought InDesign was really complicated to use, and I took a design class, which actually helped me learn how to use that. Sigil, which is a WYSIWYG editor for EPUB files. Pages actually lets you export your documents into EPUB, and then Kindle Gen, which is used to create the Amazon format. Now, validation tools have also changed. Um, there's Bookworm, which I think is uh, done by Eliza, who did a talk yesterday. I don't know where she is, but um, there's also EPUB validator. And there's also Sigil, which helps you validate your EPUB. And then EPUB Check, which was updated last month to actually support EPUB 3, which I was really excited about. And the really exciting tools, though, I think, are book app tools, which are HTML5 based, not just in the apps themselves, but browser based HTML5 tools. There's PugPig, which I've been experimenting a lot, which lets you publish HTML5 content into books and magazines. There's also the Baker framework, which will let you take HTML5 ebook. Uh, framework to publish interactive books and magazines. And then there's also the Laker framework for designing digital publications in HTML5. And taking all those tools, especially the HTML5 ones, and integrating them with APIs where actually users contribute content, you can actually create really amazing, beautiful books. Um, a couple of my friends at NYU started 
this uh, company called Fiction Brigade, where they kind of just take user stories, flash fiction. So they're kind of creating ebooks out of Twitter. Um, Yelp, TripAdvisor, Foursquare are all location based and they open up their API, which you can kind of integrate. And then yesterday I met the founder of Wordnik or someone from Wordnik who said that they actually have an amazing API that you can leverage too. And then there's Facebook, LinkedIn, food spotting, and also Google. So how can you leverage APIs to create five HTML ebooks? And these are just five um, prototypes that I've been working on. So this is a prototype that I actually worked on while I was at Time, and it's the first case study where you can integrate location-based APIs in travel guides such as TripAdvisor, Foursquare, Google, and Yelp. And what the idea there was to take all of like Time travel guides, New York Times travel guides, and package them up into eBooks because the ones that you get on the market are just repurposed from print and those actually don't work as a full functional travel guide. So the idea was to integrate the Foursquare API in there so when you're actually visiting Dubai you can check in, unlock a badge. Um, if you actually want to see the sites you can kind of load up the map directly in the ebook itself. And then if you want to check out restaurants or you want to check out places to eat you can pull in the TripAdvisor reviews or Yelp reviews into the guidebooks while you visit the place. And then the second case study is integrating social media APIs into eBooks. Um, you can pull in Twitter photos for community elements. And this is not just having people contribute or comment on the eBooks themselves, but it kind of having a hashtag where people are posting photos of a specific location that they visited and it becomes part of the book, not as like a social annotation or anything like that. Um, you can do the same with Facebook and then also integrate flash fiction streams for sidelining stories. And then the third one was uh, case study three was create eBooks from user generated content. Um, you can create amazing food guides or supplement food guides, exercise guides, best of New York guide. We're actually, a couple of friends of mine are actually working on um, a cupcake guide and dessert guide to New York City. <laughs> because um, every time a friend visits New York, a relative visits New York, they're like, what are the best dessert places to eat? And I'll send them this list. And I'm like, oh, it'd be cool if it actually had maps and they could actually interact with it. Um, and then also being able to pull in recipes and reviews if you kind of go into the cupcake location, it'll pull in recipes that other people have done from Foodaily or other uh, sites. And then also like being able to showcase user photos of like the foods that people have committed, uh, have contributed or that are part of a Twitter stream. And then the fourth case study is actually leveraging um, news content APIs because there's already a few news groups that have opened up their APIs and people can already create cool apps and integrate them, so why not use them to create contextual context in eBooks? So if you're visiting a place and then you tag every, you pull in everything in The Guardian about Dubai and then you kind of have a nice history to read while you're actually in the book itself. So by using self-publishing tools and leveraging APIs, you redefine the content creator, you stay on the cutting edge of eBook production, you reach a higher engagement with target audience, you get automatic feedback with eBooks or app books, and you create a community and social elements within the eBooks themselves. And so I'll conclude by saying that all the ingredients are in your kitchen, and a philosophy that I believe in firmly is keep building and integrating and iterating until you break it and keep on testing over and over again with your users. Thank you.